Make sure you sign these. <clears throat> Senate Local Government Committee will come to order. Today is Tuesday, April 24th, 2018. Uh, we do have a quorum, and we have two bills on the agenda today. The plan for today is to vote on Senate File 3135 uh, right around 9.30, hopefully, uh, and uh, have about 45 minutes of informational hearing on Senate File 4020 at that time uh, going forward. Uh, we'll have proponents and opponents for Senate File 3135. Uh, each one, uh, each side will have about 20 minutes each to testify, and each testifier will be limited to two minutes. After the testimony, we'll have about 15 minutes for discussion and questions from committee members, and then we'll vote on the bill. And then on for the uh, informational hearing on 4020, proponents and um, opponents will be allowed about 15 minutes for testimony, and that will be an informational meeting only, and uh, hopefully we'll get to the adjournment. Uh, the first item on the agenda is Senate File 3135, Senator Hall. Uh, welcome to the committee and to your testifiers, and proceed. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, on Senate File 3135, I'd like to start out with an author's amendment. Uh, hopefully you have the A1 amendment in front of you. The A1 amendment is uh, pretty much just technical. Uh, as you can see on page one, line 20, after A, you would insert county, comma, and after city, you'd insert another comma. If we could, uh, I'd like to move that. Senator Hall moves the A1 amendment. Uh, any questions on the amendment? If not. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, same sign. The amendment is adopted. Senator Hall. Thank you, members. Uh, Senate File 3135 uh, provides statewide uniformity on regulation of the use and sale of auxiliary containers. Auxiliary containers are like bags, cups, bottles, packaging, whether reusable or single use, that are made of cloth, paper, plastic, aluminum, glass, post-consumer recycled material or similar material and is designated for consuming, transporting, protecting merchandise, food, or beverages. When everyday products like cups, to-go containers, straws, bottles are regulated inconsistently, it provides, I'm sorry, it creates problems for consumers, working families, retailers, and manufacturers. Might I say, at this point, there are 16 other states that have already adopted uniformity laws. Uniformity across the state in this area is important to businesses operating under the state because it allows them to achieve consumer, uh, customer savings through operational efficiencies. Uniformity is equally as important to small business owners because they want and need level playing field as they oftentimes have competitors operating right across the street under a different set of rules. Regulatory clarity is important to consumers and businesses. Local businesses operating under a consistent state regulatory environment are best suited to make decisions about their products to use or what to use or what not to use which drives the right decisions for their customers, their communities, and themselves. In the end, statewide uniformity is important as a way to ensure consumer choice and options, to protect against patchwork regulation, and support thousands of American manufacturing jobs. And with that, I'll go to my testifiers, if I may, Mr. Chair. Uh, Mr. Chair, uh, uh, Senator Hall, uh, you have uh, several f testifiers. Uh, would uh, Mr. Newstead is he here this morning? Uh, if you would introduce yourself uh, for the tape and please proceed. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair and members of the committee. My name is Bruce Newstead. I work for the members of the Minnesota Retailers Association. We're a collection of retailers, small, main street, mid-size, and large retailers across the state. Uh, today, I wanted to draw your attention to a one-pager in your packet that represents. Uh, the work of some organizations that support uh, what Senator Hall is bringing forward today, Senate File 3135. We thank him and several other senators for championing this issue. 
Uh, this bill is important, as Senator Hall said, uh, because of consistency and consumer choice. Uh, we are seeing, as I think you'll hear today, a patchwork of local regulations relating to uh, plastics across the state. Uh, Minneapolis and St. Louis Park have enacted plastics regulations, and St. Paul had that conversation but rejected it uh, this past year, but I believe is going to have that conversation again. Uh, this patchwork is indeed difficult for businesses and consumers, and to give you just a quick look at that, for a large uh, retailer, uh, this patchwork disrupts their operating models and gets in the way of efficiencies that ultimately uh, relate to cost savings for consumers. For our very small retailers, uh, this patchwork is very uh, problematic because it generally means that right across the street in the neighboring community, another business, another retailer is operating under a different set of rules and providing an unlevel playing field. And I think you'll hear today from some of our new American uh, businesses in our communities, uh, this patchwork stands to st uh, stifle needed and important economic development, jobs, and entrepreneurialism. I think we heard that message loud and clear when St. Paul had this conversation. But no matter the size of retail, uh, this patchwork does interfere with decision making that's being made based on products, consumers, and communities today. And we would contend that that's the right level for those uh, decisions to be made. Uh, there are potential impacts on consumer costs and choices, especially given today, as you know, very competitive retail environment and very no mobile consumer. It doesn't take much for a consumer to decide to go shop across the street uh, if they feel like there's a burden to shop uh, in the store that they normally do. I do want to say, though, and be very, very clear about this, this effort to raise regulation to the state level isn't about taking away something from the local level, but rather vesting the uniform standard at the state level. And there are areas in which we do that in law, and I would contend that this is one of those areas that we should. Mr. Newstead, if you could wrap up, please. Thank you. Just to give you a snapshot, retailers are used to operating with state level regulations. Paint care, paint stewardship, as an example, is done not on a community by community basis, but on a state by, but on a statewide level. So thank you, Mr. Chair, and again, thank you, uh, Senator Hall, for offering this legislation. Thank you, Mr. Newstead. Uh, next. Next uh, has a Mr. Steve Rush, if he'd introduce himself and proceed. It is, Mr. Chair. Thank you very much. Good morning, Mr. Chair and members of the Senate Local Government Committee. My name is Steve Rush, and I represent Holiday Station Stores, the Bloomington, Minnesota-based convenience store company. As of 2018, Holiday has been in the retail convenience store business for 90 years. Holiday appreciates the leadership and support of Senator Hall in advancing Senate File 3135, and we strongly support its passage. We submitted a letter from my colleague at Holiday, which details the reasons for our support for your consideration. Accordingly, my remarks will be brief. When I started practicing law over 30 years ago, legal compliance with federal, state, and local laws was nothing like it has become today. With Congress and our states moving at a more deliberate pace, we have to confront far more activity at the local level than ever before. This bill attempts to bring conformity in Minnesota in the area of auxiliary containers, which is important to the convenience store industry and its customers. The biggest example of how we are affected by these local restrictions would involve our coffee cups and lids. A polystyrene styrofoam cup is inexpensive and popular, but we have seen some cities decide that we and our customers should not be able to choose polystyrene. This is where we start to get confusing when local units of government start to prohibit the use of a certain type of coffee cup there is, that is a major component of Holiday's business. These local restrictions do create a confusing patchwork of local restrictions that adds another layer of red tape when supplying our customers with compliant containers. There are also significant costs between polystyrene and compliant containers, which is outlined in the holiday letter. As a company, we do offer recycling options at our holiday stores with paper, plastic, cans, and glass. Holiday does believe in local control, but local control begins with retailers and their customers and we should be able to choose what kind of coffee cup we want to use. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Mr. Rush. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Newstead. Uh, next, we have a, 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 a Mr. McWhorter, and on deck, uh, a Mr. Yang, if they would come forward. To, uh, and uh, if you, Mr. McWhorter, if you would, uh, I hope I got that pronounced right, but if you That's would correct, identify Mr. yourself, sure. that'd be great. Lonnie McCord with 36 Linton Refuel Station. Good morning, Mr. Chair, members of this committee. Thank you for hearing my uh, testimony today. I uh, run a small convenience store in South Minneapolis, and we are really well known for what we do in our community and for a lot of the engagement that we have, as well as for 
being innovative in a number of areas. We focus on having a lot of locally sourced and organic items in our selection, as well as dealing with uh, paying our staff a livable wage and really working hard to make sure everyone feels included in our operations. Uh, I want to ask for support on this, uh, on this, on uh, Senator Hall's bill here, um, for the reasons that when I first started off in this business around 13 years ago, it was extremely difficult. I was learning the ropes and. To have more legislation put, put on me at that time, I'm not sure that I'd be able to subsist. If you take a look at the business section of any newspaper, you can see all of the remnants of what used to be many retailers and how we continue to face many uphill battles and many fights, in, including in the restaurant business as well. Now, this isn't to say that I'm opposed to uh, compostable cups. In fact, I use in my own business. I just believe that we need to have more freedom of choice among the options there for many of our retailers and of the restaurateurs. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Mr. McCorder. Uh, Mr. Yang, if you would identify yourself for the tape and please proceed. Good morning, um, Senator Hall and the committee members. My name is Pasi Yang. I'm uh, President uh, of the Minister Mong Chamber. The Minister Mong, Mong Chamber has represented Hmong business since 1979. The, the Chamber worked hard to create opportunity for the Hmong, uh, Hmong community business advocates economic uh, prosperity for all. Minnesota Hmong Chamber and the uh, Hmong population in, in the Twin Cities, about 80,000 people. Over, we have over 600 business, owned and operated business. Our organization has over 100 members. This immigrant owned and operated business serve Minnesota in many different ways. The, the majority of the Hmong business are a small startup in the food business industry. I used to own a business in, in Senator Wigger's district. The Hmong community has a strong entrepreneurial spirit. We work hard to del deliver skills, services to our customer. Hmong restaurant and cafe, cafe take great pride in the food business service. Food service operate work long hour and a small slim margin. Any change, any small change to their business model has great impact on their li 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 livelihood, sorry. Our organization have very cons uh, has, has very concern with the measure that has proposed last year to ban the packaging that our community use. This pol policy measure has a little impact on environmental benefit, but would triple the cost of the packaging for St. Paul small businesses. The to-go packaging ban did not affect big businesses or corporations. This specifically target our community and the business. This gives a big business an advantage to, by allowing them to still sell food out of cheap packaging material. While this order change did not pass last year, the council indicated they will, they will bring this measure back in one year. This great burden on our business to fight this proposal. City and municipal government should not create additional economic barriers that prevent immigrant workers who operate and start new business. Local government should be encouraged and reward small businesses to grow and not giving large corporate and a competitive edge over immigrant community. Mr. Yang, could you wrap up, please? Yes. Our member will willing to do and whatever uh, their part and their response towards. And simply, we ask the government to pres uh, represent and to do the, the same. This is a ban will not have an environmental benefit and negatively impact the business restaurant and cafe should have an opportunity to, to choose the material which is best for their customer and for their product. 
Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Yang. Uh, next on our agenda uh, for testifier is uh, Mr. Cassetta. Welcome to the committee. Please identify yourself for the tape and proceed. Thank you. My name is Dave Cassetta. Thank you, Mr. Chair. My name is Dave Cassetta, owner of Cassetta's, and I am here in support of House File 3606. I believe this is an issue of fairness. The ordinance the City of St. Paul brought forth last year would have banned black recyclable plastic from my restaurant, but it would have allowed black plastic in large supermarkets and retail stores. This ordinance and other ordinance like this unfairly targeting the restaurant industry. As businesses, we try to be forward thinking and uh, plan uh, and develop our model that would keep our operations sustainable. I found a material that was cost effective and worked for my products and for my customers. The black plastic we use is recyclable. At, that, at this time, no cost-effective comparable compostable materials that work for our products. Uh, for our products, Cassettes employs 300 people. The containers we use now work fine. Just uh, Cassettes would rather put money into our workforce instead of spending an additional 240,000 on to-go containers to replace what we currently use that actually do not work. Banning certain products and mandating the use of others, the use of other more expensive materials does not help us, our customers. It simply adds costs, administrative burdens, and squanders tax dollars. Genio, Hormel, Oscar Mayer, Vaseline, etc., are large companies that would be exempted. Mung Village and Mung Town and many other small independents as us would be mandated. Today, our customers can make these choices that best fit their needs. In our restaurants, you can find a variety of food packaging materials that are sensitive to our consumer choices in terms of prices and the ability of these materials to be recycled or composted. Packaging bans force us all to use more expensive and non-functional food packaging materials. We are then forced to these increases along to our customers. More restrictive measures like the one that proposed in St. Paul without similar changes in all cities and industries is unfair to the businesses who operate in that city. Mr. Cassetta, could you wrap up, please? Cassetta's currently, we are a recyclable program. Cassetta's will, recyclable, will recycle our black recyclable plastic. Last evening, I purchased these items that you see in front of you at a supermarket, and I am requesting that you see these items that would be exempted under the St. Paul ordinance, but would be mandated by all other people in small markets and restaurants, such as Cassettes. Cassettes promises to do its part. The recyclable company must do its part. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Cassetta. <clears throat> Are there anybody, is there anybody else in the audience that would like to testify in support of Senate File 3135. If not, then we will proceed with those who have come to testify as opponents. Uh, Mr. Huser, if he's here, uh, please come. And Mr. Johnson, if he would come and be on deck, that would be appreciative. Please identify yourself for the tape and proceed. Thank you. Mr. Chair, members of the committee, my name is Stephen Huser and I represent Metro Cities. Metro Cities represents the shared interests of cities in the seven county metro area at the legislature, executive branch, and the Metropolitan Council. Metro Cities respectfully opposes Senate File 3135, which would preempt local authority related to auxiliary containers. This bill contradicts Metro Cities' policy supporting local authority and allowing municipalities to work with their local businesses, community members, and to decide their own local ordinances. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Huser. Mr. Johnson, if you'd identify yourself and proceed. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, committee members. My name is Andrew Johnson. I'm on the Minneapolis City Council. I'm the majority leader and the chair of our Intergovernmental Relations Committee. 
And actually, the first ordinance that I authored when I was elected was a ban on styrofoam takeout containers in Minneapolis. I took this on, and by the way, this bill would actually nullify that ordinance, but I took this ordinance on because these containers are bad for consumers, taxpayers, and the environment. They leach a known carcinogen and an endocrine disruptor into the food and beverages in which, uh, which they contain. They pollute the recycling stream and increase cost of taxpayers to process each ton of recyclables. And they represent an aggressive form of litter that gets easily carried by wind and breaks into many pieces that end up contaminating our water and clogging the digestive system of wildlife. We worked closely with small business community and supplies industry to get our ordinance passed and to help support them before and after. By and large, what I hear from countless small business owners is that they say they are in support of this ban because it leveled the playing field and created economies of scale with sustainable packaging, which helped them afford to do the right thing. The ordinance even had the unintended effect of benefiting Minnesota's timber and paper industry through increased sales of compostable and recyclable containers. It's no wonder this ordinance has been wildly popular, and years later, I still have people thanking me for it. And by the way, our ordinance is in keeping with what the state has mandated us to do. The state set an ambitious goal of 75% recycling by 2030 for the Twin Cities area. And the state delegates management of solid waste to local government through their solid waste management plans and by requiring management of materials according to waste management hierarchy. Senators, the city of Minneapolis is opposed to this preemption bill. But if you are going to pass it, at least exempt ordinances that are already in place. Otherwise, you will be raising costs for small businesses and our taxpayers and hurting consumers in the process. Please do not upend our years of work on this. And I extend an invite to all of you, if you table this bill, Senator Hall as well, please come to Minneapolis, see our recycling facility, talk to our health inspectors. We'll go walk each street and talk to our small business owners and you'll see one by one by one unless they're ideologically opposed, which a minority of them are, but overall they are very much in support of this. Again, it really levels the playing field and advantages them. So please, please wrap up, please, Mr. 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 Chair, committee members, do not break what is working. And I want to add one last note. The gentleman who owns Cassettas who testified on his packaging, under our ordinance, that packaging is completely permissible. It's allowed. It's not affected. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Johnson. Uh, next on test, testify is Ms. Lindstrom and Ms. Barker. If they come forward. And please identify yourself for the tape and proceed. Thank you. Good morning, Mr. Chair, members of the committee. My name is Ann Lindstrom with the League of Minnesota Cities. We represent over 800 cities across the state. And today I'm here to express our opposition to this bill. Over 100 cities have adopted resolutions in support of local control, and as we say with each bill that comes forward that infringes on our city's ability to make these decisions, we like to point out that elected officials consider these issues in response to their constituents in a transparent thought and deliberative way, similarly to this forum. Our city elected officials are also held accountable to their constituents, and that's not just at the ballot box, that's also on a daily basis for a lot of them at the grocery store, at church, and at their jobs, and similarly to state elected officials. This bill takes away that ability on a specific issue, and as Councilmember Johnson said, it would nullify existing ordinances. For these reasons, we respectfully ask you to oppose this bill. Thank you, Ms. Lindstrom. Uh, Ms. Barker, please identify yourself at the tape. Thank you. Uh, senators, members of the committee, thank you for your time to speak today. My name is Emily Barker. I'm a recycling specialist with the city of St. Louis Park, and I'm here today to speak in opposition to Senate File 3135. For over 40 years, the Minnesota legislature has placed the responsibility for managing solid waste with the cities and counties. We provide education to residents to help them understand what can be recycled, and we set policies to support quality recycling programs and reduce contamination. We also play an important role in achieving the 75% recycling goal set for metro counties in the, by the legislature in 2014. Different cities have different needs when it comes to solid waste. Determining the types of policies that will work best should be left to the local authorities who know the specific challenges of that community. A policy on auxiliary containers such as to-go food packaging might be considered to increase the amount of materials that can be recycled or composted, minimize contamination in recycling and organics, or reduce litter. The city of St. Louis Park has been a leader in recycling since the early 1980s, when the city began organized recycling collection at the curb. 
Our zero waste so packaging ordinance went into effect January 1st, 2017, with a goal of decreasing the amount of single-use food packaging in the trash. This policy was put into place after extensive public process and discussion with stakeholders to determine what policy would serve the, best, the needs of our community best. Since implementation, businesses across the city have made changes to their packaging, and I will note that we haven't had that many difficulties. And these new items can now be placed in the organics and recycling. Additionally, for some businesses, while cheaper packaging may save some cost, for most it's not a major expense, and non-recyclable packaging simply puts the cost on customers to dispose of in their trash, which is then taxed by both the state and many counties, which they don't have to pay if those items were going in the recycling. St. Louis Park's ordinance helps reduce the amount of material our community must send for disposal, reduces contamination in our curbside organics, and supports the 75% metro recycling goal. A policy on packaging is not right for all communities, but all communities should have the ability to have the conversation and make the decision locally. Prohibiting implementation of policies regarding auxiliary containers takes away a potential tool for local governments to do our job of properly managing solid waste in our communities and impedes our ability to achieve state and local goals. The City of St. Louis Park opposes this effort to undermine local authority related to solid waste and asks you to vote against this bill today. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you, Ms. Parker. Um, if the next testifier, Ms. Stennis and Mr. Schaefer would come forward. If you would identify yourself for the tape and please proceed. Thank you. Good morning, Mr. Chair and, and members of the Senate. Um, my name is Megan Cool Stennis. I'm representing Eureka Recycling. We are a social enterprise and zero waste organization based in Northeast Minneapolis. Eureka Recycling has served the Twin Cities community for over 15 years. We collect recyclables from, from all over the Twin Cities metro area and have a materials recovery facility, or a MRF, to sort ma recyclables that residents and businesses separate from their trash. We sort these materials into over a dozen categories, and over 80% of our materials sold stay right here in Minnesota to be made into new products. We respectfully oppose Senate File 3135 because cities should have the ability to respond to the needs of their community members. And I reiterate, these are community-led initiatives, including regulating unsafe or unhealthy packaging and products that can harm the people and their environment. We oppose this legislation because ordinances that regulate products and packaging help support recycling and composting programs by reducing contamination and are effective at doing so. Because these ordinances come with broad and long education campaigns for both consumers and food businesses, it, help, it helps consumers and food businesses understand more about the products that they buy and how to properly manage them after their intended use. This saves the individual and cities hundreds of thousands of dollars, excuse me, <clears throat> in litter and disposal costs. Additionally, plastic bags are blight on our community and the environment and a very problematic contaminant for all recycling facilities, including ours. We have several workers manually pull them out of the materials we receive, but many still get wrapped around the equipment. We spend two hours every day cutting out the plastic bags out of our equipment. This is dangerous and unnecessary work and it adds cost to the recycling program. This, this um, bill would take away that opportunity to reduce bag use. Um, bag fees have been proven to reduce bag use. Washington, D.C. saw a 60% reduction in single-use carryout bag usage in the first year when a five-cent fee was implemented. This legislation you are considering would prohibit a city from charging a fee on problematic materials. And since this legislation passed last year, preempted cities from regulating the use of sing single-use bags, excuse me, Fees are the only tool available to restrict use of problem materials. This Ms. preemption bill takes away the individual city's rights to take action and avoid of state taking action. Not every city is ready, needs, or wants this kind of ordinance, but the ones that do should not be prohibited from using this tool by elected officials who don't live in those cities. Please do not support Senate File 3135. Thank you again for the opportunity to speak, and I will be happy to stand for questions. If Thank you, like. you Ms. Stennis. Um, Mr. Schaefer? Good morning. My name is Tim Schaefer, and I'm the director of Environment Minnesota. We're a citizen-funded uh, public advocacy nonprofit with over 7,000 members around the state. We strongly oppose SF3135 and any preemption of local solid waste protections. As a society, we simply produce too many things that are immediately thrown away. And that's when they become a huge problem for cities like St. Louis Park and Minneapolis, and a bigger problem for recyclers. Solid waste management is a huge, complicated, and expensive task for Minnesota's municipalities, SF3135 would simply rob them of a vital tool for controlling what enters the waste stream and when. 
So I want to be very clear. Environment Minnesota supports smart, fair, local restrictions on commercial waste, like those already effectively implemented in St. Louis Park and Minneapolis. But if this preemption measure takes effect, we will fight for a statewide ban on outdated, tough to recycle materials like polystyrene. And if this committee is truly concerned with varying local restrictions, statewide bans or restrictions are the next logical step. In the meantime though, local controls like Minneapolis's Green to Go help consumers and ease the burden on cities. Allowing municipalities to set their own waste restrictions while the state sets recycling goals is a fair compromise, and it's one that Minnesota is already taking advantage of. Please don't gamble by throwing it away. Vote to reject SF3135. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Schaefer. Um, next, uh, Ms. Mr. Conroy, Conroy uh, and Mr. Kadelka. And uh, for the audience, please identify yourself with the tape and proceed. Sure. Uh, Mr. Chair, members of the committee, my name is Chris Conry. I'm here representing Take Action Minnesota. Uh, we are opposed to Senate File 3135. Uh, Senate File 3135 is one of over 50 preemption bills introduced during this biennium. Uh, these measures have attacked workplace standards, voting rights, civil rights, law enforcement, transit options, housing and land use, fire safety, and yes, now, uh, local control of waste management. Uh, these proposals are not a coincidence. Uh, they are not unique to Minnesota. Like many other states, we are experiencing these anti-local measures uh, that are rolling back uh, the standards that counties, cities, and townships have put in place to protect their own residences. Pioneered by the tobacco industry and perfected by the gun industry, preemption has become the tool of choice for industries who want to push back on democratically enacted uh, common sense ordinances that local communities have passed for themselves. Uh, these ordinances have been carefully crafted through the unique give and take that residents, businesses, and local of elected officials engage in in their local government. Uh, local government is a source of innovation that we all depend on. Uh, please protect local democracy by voting no on Senate File 3135. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Conry. Uh, Mr. Kadelka. Mr. Chair and committee members, for the record, my name is Kirk Kadelka. I'm Assistant Commissioner with the Minnesota Pollution Control Agency. We're here to testify in opposition of Senate File 3135. We have worked on other bills also and have opposed other <coughs> prohibitions on local ordinances related to solid waste. Others have talked already about the requirements the legislature has put on local units of government, including a 75% goal for recycling in the metropolitan area. So I'm gonna focus on a couple other areas. One is the impact of these uh, policies that we've been talking about, which is uh, compostable, recyclable materials. We talked a little bit earlier about how much of this really make a difference going into the waste. While certain components of the packaging may be small amounts, over 30% of what we throw away today is in packaging and containers. If we can move to making sure those things stay out of landfills by having them be recyclable materials or compostable, we're gaining on our recycling goals. In addition, non-compostable items in organics collection is a negative factor. Not only now are we throwing away something, but now we have um, contaminated what others have rightfully put away for recycling and now having that negative effect and pulling those other materials back into the landfill, which folks have worked hard to keep from the landfill. And finally, uh, these type of ordinance have multiplying impacts on recycling. Compostable materials, uh, and whether it's service wear, packaging containers, have shown increases in organics collection rates at individual venues and also community uh, communities overall. For instance, Target Field, when it replaced its concessions packaging with compostable alternatives, raised from a recycling rate of 61 to 79 percent. When you look at communities, neighboring communities in Washington State, we saw uh, Tacoma, Washington, which does not accept compostable packaging and flatware and their organics, only had a, a capture rate of food of 11 percent. But the rest of King County and, and Seattle saw 22 and 52 percent food capture rates as a result. It's because when you make recycling and composting easy by looking at the packages, when you have something you may have come from a restaurant and you can quickly within the first 30 seconds to determine which container it goes in, people are gonna make the right decisions. If you create that moment of hesitation, it will go into the trash, all of it, including which was compostable or recyclable. Mr. Cadelco, so could you wrap up, please? I will, well, thank you. The other quick thing is there are uh, benefits to other businesses. There are businesses large and small in Minnesota that benefit, including NatureWorks, which produces compostable serviceware packaging containers located here in Minnesota, 
organics collection companies from organic solutions to individual waste haulers, <coughs> composting companies such as SET, the mulch store, and Creekside Soils. Overall, recycling and composting in Minnesota provides 60,000 jobs in addition to providing many um, good paying jobs. So there are economic benefits on the other side of the ledger too. Thank you, Chair. And Thank you, Mr. Kadelka. Uh, the, our last testifier, uh, uh, one of the opponents of Mr. Stark. <coughs> Please identify yourself for the tape and proceed. Thank you. <coughs> Mr. Chair, uh, Senators, good morning. My name is Russ Stark. I'm the Chief Resilience Officer for Mayor, Mayor Melvin Carter in St. Paul. It's a new position for me. I spent 10 years on the City Council, including three years Council President in St. Paul. Um, I think the, the key issue for us here is the, the particular principle behind preemption or local control. In this case, I'm, I'm not 100% clear on what the principle is behind the idea of restricting a city's ability to act in this realm. Uh, the principle doesn't seem to be, um, you know, generally uh, some civil right or, or looking out for the, the betterment of our environment. It seems to be uh, that some people don't like an outcome in some local governments, and so they're trying to go around other local governments to, to, to bind their hands. And I'm, I'm asking you today to please consider that we've already had this debate in St. Paul. The gentleman identified correctly that so far uh, this idea has been rejected by my former colleagues in the city council. Um, I, I'm okay with that outcome. That's, that's the democratic process at work in St. Paul. Please don't bind our hands to, to not have that democratic process. Um, in the same way that states are sort of uh, pockets of experimentation around the country when it comes to uh, policies in various areas, including healthcare, I think cities in our state can be those um, research and development arms of what, what is good policy. Um, let, let, us, let us continue to have that debate. Uh, the, there were a couple references to the proposed ordinance in St. Paul that I want to clarify. Um, the ordinance in St. Paul that was proposed was about making sure that any to-go food container was going to be readily recyclable or compostable. It did, not, it did not target any particular product line. The black plastic, while you can throw it in the recycling container, it doesn't actually get recycled um, because Eureka has not been able to find a market for that material. And that, that's what it boiled down to for us. We want to make sure that when people believe that they're actually recycling something, mm -hmm. it's being recycled. Um, and fundamentally, uh, we appreciate uh, your consideration. I've, uh, been in seats similar to yours, understand how difficult this uh, job can be. Um, in this case, just would ask respectfully to give us the ability to keep having the debate in our cities. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Stark. Uh, are there any others in the audience that would like to speak in opposition to Senate File 3135? Well, if not, uh, Senator Hall, any other further comments before we go to the committee here to have questions? No, I'll let the committee um, speak first, and if they have questions, then maybe I can make an end statement. Thank you, Senator Hall. Uh, members, questions? Uh, <coughs> excuse me. Senator Lang? Thank you, Mr. Chair. A uh, question for uh, Senator Hall is, what is the process that we are undertaking here? Because we've ended most of our, our ended our committee work uh, in, in general. And um, this is past deadlines, and uh, I can understand an informational hearing at this point, but uh, I know there are processes that you can take, but it really is an uh, unusual thing to do to, at this time, way past deadlines, uh, undertake a new bill for a policy committee. Senator Hall. Um, thank you, Mr. Chair and Senator Lane. Um, uh, it is unusual, but not unprecedented by any means. Um, to me, we're going to get this out, and we're going to move it to, uh, I believe, Commerce. And uh, from there, um, I expect that there won't be much action that I know of. And so it'll either just be there for us to bring up next year or not. But we thought it would be good to have a hearing, to hear it out, to hear both sides of the, of the issue, and then to, uh, to give a vote on it, see where people are at. Senator Lane, follow up. Thank you. Any further questions? Senator Torres Ray. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, Senator Hall, a, a couple of issues um, after talking to you and, and hearing your intent to really kind of dive into this conversation for the future. I uh, have prepared a couple of amendments that I think are important, and I think we heard from the testimony today. 
Um, I'll just speak briefly about kind of the broad perspective and then just offer the amendments one by one. One is uh, an issue uh, related to the opportunity that we have with industries that are very important to the state of Minnesota, which are the timber industry and the paper industry, and how uh, really in the Midwest and many other states, uh, people are kind of moving into these recyclable uh, containers, and that industry is an industry that is growing. And the opposite is true for these um, other um, oil-based products that are actually taking, being taken out of the market and they are not produced actually here. So um, I think we have a great opportunity to do so, and I think we, we need to contemplate that and ask um, our state agencies to help us dive into what that is and the opportunities that are for us and what it means for the small um, businesses that have to do the transition. Perhaps we have to think about you know, how do we do that. Uh, in terms of tax breaks or whatever we need to do. So I have the A4 amendment, Mr. Chair. Senator Torres Ray has A4 amendment. Uh, I'm guessing we need to have that passed out. So Mr. Chair and, and Senator Hall, this, this particular amendment is a very simple amendment that asks the Commissioner of Labor and Industry to conduct an economic uh, impact study uh, kind of measuring the job growth and opportunities for developing these industries. So it, it just asks, you know, what is the cost of this? What businesses need to do to transition? And what that will do, uh, Mr. Chair and Senator Hall, is just simply give us a little bit of better perspective as to what other states are doing, you know, how these containers kind of, you know, if we have an opportunity to produce another container, what do we need to do in order to make it uh, cost um, competitive so that these small businesses can acquire this? Because you heard from the small businesses, they really want to transition you know, from this product into a more uh, compostable uh, product. And so if we could work together to figure out how do we do that, uh, I think that's a good idea. So that's what this amendment does. Uh, it's not a, I hope it's not a controversial amendment, but it helps us understand how do we move in terms of policy. Senator Hall to the Mr. amendment. Mr. Chair and uh, Senator Torres Ray, I would uh, see the uh, A4 amendment as a friendly amendment, and thank you for it, and uh, would, would agree uh, more information is better. So, Senator Hall, would you like to incorporate that into your bill? Um, yes. We okay. can, um, Senator Torres Ray, I assume, moves that amendment. Thank you, any, Senator Hall. Okay, any further questions for Senator uh, Torres Ray? S Senator I, Ralph. Yes, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Senator, uh, is there a fiscal note attached to this, or would there be? It seems to me you're directing the the uh, uh, commissioner to conduct a study that goes beyond. Sometimes you can do that internally without cost, but has anybody inquired as to whether there's a cost to this? Senator Torres, right? Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair, and thank you, Senator Ralph. Uh, Senator Hall, my understanding is that, in general, this bill will have to have a kind of a fiscal um, review in terms of, you know, what, what we, um, I think the uh, city council member talk about some of the cities are going to have to, uh, if this passes, they're going to have to go back, you know, prior to ordinance. So I think th that there will be a fiscal impact on this. And my hope is that, you know, if, if we have a conversation uh, with the Commissioner of Labor and Industry, my sense is that some of these ideas are already coming to their attention, and they're looking into what we need to do as a state. The same is true for commerce. I think they are trying to figure out what to do. So there might be a fiscal, uh, Senator Ralph, I, I am not sure. My hope is that it's not too big and that it fits within you know, the, the work that they are trying to do in terms of moving mm -hmm. the state into recyclable and compostable. Mm -hmm. Follow up, Senator Ralph? Uh, no, thank you. Thank you. Any other further questions for Senator Torres Ray? on this. Senator Hall? Um, Mr. Chair, I wonder if our council has any idea on a fiscal note. Ms. Priyanka? Mr. Chair, Senator Hall, um, generally when we ask uh, departments to conduct studies without an appropriation, they would be absorbing that cost. What that cost is, uh, I'm not aware of. Senator Hall? Um, Okay. Under, under that, if they're absorbing it, I would, uh, again, consider it a friendly amendment. Okay. Any other questions? If not, we'll take a vote. All those in favor of the amendment, signify by saying aye. 
Aye. Aye. Opposed the same sign. Amendment is a pass. Any other further comments or questions? Senator Torres Ray. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman. Senator Hall, um, I am excited that you're having this conversation about uh, waste management. Uh, I think this is, you know, kind of water issues and waste management are kind of the topics of the moment. These are things that we really need to do. Uh, what I hear, however, is that in reality, we don't have a, we don't have a system in place and, and we haven't had a conversation about what this, how this needs to happen. And so I have an amendment, which is the A5 amendment. Um, and this will have, <laughs> Senator Ralph, a very big fiscal note um, that I hope we move into, uh, which provides an, an open appropriation to the uh, solid waste processing facility, uh, facilities cap capital assistance program which goes to local authorities that allow cities and counties to apply for grants to develop innovative ways uh, to manage uh, solid waste. Um, in Minneapolis, and I think uh, Andrew, uh, S S uh, Council Member Johnson talked about really a lot of the innovative things that have happened in the city as a result of uh, really citizen engagements. Uh, our constituents have demanded that we do this and I think it's incredibly important that we look at some of the best practices that have been developed by some localities and Lewis Park is doing something incredibly innovative. But we have not had the chance to review that and to really look at the cost of this. And so what the A5 amendment will do is that it will give us an opportunity to look at that uh, what kind of, so I don't have an appropriation here, uh, Mr. Chair, but it just simply says that we should put that in there so that uh, the state, and this goes back to uh, the, the core intention of this bill, uh, Senator, which I believe you consistently say that, and you're, you're, the people who were testifying, is that you really want to have consistency across you know, uh, borderline so that people are doing the same thing and they consistently manage uh, uh, waste and recycling and compostables. Mm -hmm. And I think this will give us an opportunity to really say, okay, we're gonna have consistent ways of doing this business in the future in the state of Minnesota. And we provide the funding and the guidelines to do so. And today we don't have that. So that's what this amendment is, uh, Senators. And again, it is my, um, intention to really um, build into the argument that you bring before us, uh, Senator Hall, to really have a more consistent system so that businesses don't have to deal with this issue that, they, you know, they go from town to town and they, they have to do something else. There will be policy and, and funding that guides, you know, across borders uh, how we manage waste. So that's what that amendment is, Mr. Chair. And, uh, Senator Hall. So Senator Torres Ray moves the A5 amendment. Senator Hall. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chair and Senator Torres Ray, and I appreciate uh, your concern for consistency across the borders um, uh, with this bill because of the appropriation. It would probably be better to be seen in, uh, would have to be seen in other committees, um, but I'm not looking to bring a fiscal note uh, on the bill, and so I want to keep this clean and I would oppose the A5 amendment. Okay, Senator Hall. Uh, members, comments or questions? Senator Lane. Thank you, Madam, Mr. Chair. Um, I just wanna say, remind us that the necessity is the mother of all invention and where there's a need, we can, we can solve the problem and this sets us up for that. Um, I know that the cooperatives, the, the Wedge and um, Eastside Co-op that I go to have already used, uh, are already using recyclable containers, so we know that there's opportunities out there, possibilities out there right now, and let's just uh, look deeper and, and encourage um, uh, innovative ways to manage it. Senator Matthews. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Senator Torres Ray, did you offer this A5 amendment as a standalone bill? Uh, Senator Torres Ray. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. No, Senator Matthews, I haven't. Senator Matthews. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, Senator Torres Ray, I do believe that this could be uh, an idea uh, worthy of consideration for its statewide impact because the, this could be for municipalities uh, for around the state. Um, this could be something that could be an ongoing discussion for how we can uh, handle these kinds of processing procedures. Um, 
And so I think it should stand as a, uh, it should travel as its own standalone bill rather than just trying to be um, the retort to um, trying to, Senator Hall's efforts to uh, help with consistencies in our businesses with this bill. Senator Torstray. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Senator uh, Matthews, would you be my co-author and we will work <laughs> on it for next year, which is a budget year? Senator Matthews. Mr. Chair, Senator Torres Ray, um, I will keep thinking on it. Um, I'm reading it here for the first time, but would definitely consider it. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I, uh, I look forward to that, and I, I, I mean that seriously, uh, Senator Matthews. I think this is, this is a, a need, and I'm sure that the entire audience who is here will support us on this and many more. So I'm going to table this amendment for now, and thank you, Mr. Chair. So to Senator Torres Ray is uh, pulling, with, withdrawing her amendment, the A5 amendment. Are there other questions or other concerns? Senator Torres Ray. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And uh, <clears throat> Senator Hall, uh, Mr. Chair and members, I, I have a final amendment, which is the A2 amendment. And um, Senator, I think that this amendment speaks to uh, really the, the testimony that many brought before us. Uh, some cities are doing incredible work to really move in a direction of looking at alternatives that are environmentally responsible in this area. I believe that it is our obligation to support their work. This is not easy for a city. Uh, for the city of Minneapolis, I think uh, City Council Member Johnson made it sound like it was an easy thing to do, <laughs> that you know he worked with people and he worked with businesses. This was years of work incredible amount of, of energy and um, engagement with the community. And we're finally moving into uh, really an implementation of an ordinance that has been welcome. Business are moving in this direction. And I really believe that this, this bill actually punishes uh, uh, my city. And, and I just, uh, you know, I, I represent the city members. I'm here to speak on their behalf. And I would like to, um, to make sure that they continue to move in this direction, as difficult as it is, I think is the responsible thing to do. So this particular amendment uh, will support their work and we make, will make sure that they are exempt from this and they can continue to do what they've been doing. They are, you know, this is one of the largest cities. Um, the volume of uh, uh, waste that they have to manage and the innovative practices that they have to incorporate, is just real. And, and they need your support members. So I, I think that we, they have made a lot of progress. They have engaged in this conversation already. And for us to put legislation that will torpedo this effort, it's just not fair. So I would like to ask uh, Mr. Chair and, and Senator Holt to please honor that work and, and uh, really support the work of the cities. And so this amendment uh, simply makes, um, uh, uh, delete the, um, uh, line two in page two after enactment and inserts uh, and applies to any ordinance passed on or after that date, meaning that w people who are working, uh, cities who are working in this direction uh, can continue to do the work and that's the case for St. Louis Park who actually also is doing this work. So people who are, you know, the, the city council members, mayors and people, localities that are moving in this direction. This is again about local control. Uh, Mr. Chair and Senator Hall. I, I think that we respect local control in this area. I agree that we need to move into guidelines for everyone, but it shouldn't be guidelines that really, um, you know, impact uh, important process, important progress in terms of environmental policy. So that's what this amendment is, and I hope um, I'm able to get your support, and I would like to get a roll call on this vote, please. Senator Torres Ray. Uh moves the A2 amendment and calls, asks for a roll call. Roll call will be given. Other questions? Senator Hall, response. Um, thank you, <coughs> Mr. Chair and uh, Senator Torres Ray. Uh, you, ha you had a few things that uh, I want to get to. Uh, I would oppose this amendment. Um, but first off, I want to say I, I believe you're right. I believe there are good intentions out there by some of the local governments. Um, <coughs> My problem has been that we have a view of local government that I think is skewed. Local government starts with 
self-government. And self-government is the private person out there that has his own home or yard. And the government needs to be careful not to um, put undue pressure on them. And then they also own businesses, private businesses. These are self-government. These are the localists of local government. And so for me, we are, when I talk local government, I'm talking about the private citizen. And there are times when <clears throat> private citizens um, can be controlled, if you want to say it that way, by the cities or townships or counties in the area. And everybody seems to agree, but once in a while it starts to bleed into affecting not just that local government or that local city and township, but it, it affects that private business that is in two different governments, local governments, if you will. And so when it starts to abuse their power and change things, there's a time when the state needs to overlook and, and, uh, and say that that's just not right and proper to do. You might even look at it as <clears throat> when your neighbor all of a sudden erects a backyard uh, jungle gym that over extends to your yard. And you say, well, wait a minute, this is going a little bit too far. Yeah, but it's in my yard, I should be able to do it. And that's where the state comes in and says, if, if you're overdoing something, we need to make sure that it is done in a proper respect for everybody. So with that, again, I'm going to oppose this because I think as a state, we need to regulate certain things. And, and yes, the federal government can come back and regulate us. Uh, but I think this is proper because I've heard from a lot of cities. And, and let me make a note here. Private businesses can still use whatever um, cups and bottles, containers they want. If they choose to use the, those that are better recyclable, they have that option. So we're giving choice to the private business and to the private individual and thus to the most local government. That's my personal view, and I do oppose the A5 amendment. Uh, Senator Matthews. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Senator Hall, you actually uh, just addressed the question I was going to ask as to whether or not your bill would uh, force businesses to take plastic containers or whether they could continue to use exclusively uh, compostable containers if they uh, wanted to continue to do so. And you answered that question, uh, but building on that, uh, do you agree with the overall principle that um, potentially residents in Minneapolis or other municipalities that want to move in this direction, that consumers can choose to spend their dollars with restaurants or businesses that support causes they believe in and can avoid uh, other businesses or establishments that support causes that they don't believe in. Do, you, do we agree with that philosophy? Senator Hall. Mr. Chair and Senator Matthews, of course I do, and, uh, and I believe that's how the free enterprise works. Senator Lane. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, well, I think you really stirred something with your comments, but um, I might say uh, the question might be who, who has control over what is important to all of us? Because you now you're saying that nobody should have control over the businesses except for, you know, they ought to be able to do what they need to, on and on it goes. So who has control over our whole body's health? Who has control over the health of our children and our future? Who has control over that? And that's what we're actually approaching here because these elements are dangerous. It isn't, oh, the businesses will save some money if they can go this way instead of that way or they don't want to, it's, it's, it's difficult because we're doing a patchwork. Well, the patchwork solution is make it statewide as we have paint stewardship statewide. Um, uh, so the question is, who has control over our health? Now, I am trying very hard in my own personal life to do this where I can, because we now have organic recycling too. So I've been recycling things that can be recycled and that yet the trash fills up, so now I'm going to start organic recycling. And yet there's always those things that have no place to go. And I feel guilty. I go, I know 
the dangers to this plastic bag. What am I to do with this? And yet it is pervasive in our, in our society, and we haven't solved that problem yet, and it is very serious. It isn't just a capitalistic thing. It's a personal health thing for everybody and our future. We have to solve this problem. It is very serious. So it isn't just a, a, a small situation of local control and who has control. It is all of our concerns, and our elected representatives ought to be taking heed. Senator Hall. Thank you, Mr. Chair, and Senator Lane. And much of that I agree with you. Um, and that's how the process works. I just believe that this is a state issue and is best done by the state, not by the cities, towns, or counties. Senator Jasinski. Thank you, Mr. Chair and Senator Hall. Uh, you, you summed it up great in your last statements before this last question. I, you know, I was a mayor for eight years in Faribault, so I understand local control. I think a lot of that goes to planning and zoning. Things are the, more the high priorities of local control. Uh, but as you said, as you stated as an example of the jungle gym in the backyard of someone, I think we need to look at this at a, at a statewide level. I think it's much better. But uh, the people out there, the businesses, when I was the mayor, I always was a business guy. I was involved in real estate. I was involved in retail. I was involved in all those things. But I always thought to protect the businesses to, to a fair as well because a lot of times the businesses are working hard every day, day in, day out. They're focusing on their business like Mr. Cassetta. They're dealing with, with issues from minimum wage to, to hiring to all those different things and all these things that come in front of us as far as these is, and, and recycling and things like that, a lot of times they don't get to attend those meetings because they're busy running their business. And that's the concern I have, the, the private business person that's out there that, that doesn't get involved in these things because they can't. They don't have the time. Uh, so for us as re government to get in and, and a patchwork is my concern. I don't like the patchwork. At a statewide level, I agree with Senator Torres Ray, we need to look at this in the future and come up with something that, that's done uniformly. Uh, statewide to have one community against another, that one, one restaurant or one store can sell it and, and a mile away in another community, they cannot. That creates an uncompetitive advantage. So. I agree with the statewide regulations, and I, I think this is a good bill, and I would look forward in, in next year or the coming months or whatever, or next session to look at this at a statewide regulation, but I will support the bill. Senator Wicklund. Thank you, Mr. Terry. Um, back to the amendment that we're talking about, um, I guess I wanted to just express my support for the amendment, and um, I think Part of the, the issue I have with this bill coming forward at this time is that it's now um, April 24th and we, you know, it's way past deadline. We didn't have much notice that this was going to be presented. Um, and if you look at um, this uh, retroactive application clause in the bill, um, I have serious issues with applying something retroactively to cities that have spent you know, they've spent the time they've needed to come up with these ordinances. And we had about, I don't know, maybe five minutes or maybe 10 minutes, if I'm generous, about uh, Minneapolis and St. Louis Park, what they have done. Um, certainly didn't get to hear the extent of the work that went on to create the ordinance that they, they came up with. Certainly didn't get to hear from... Um, them about how they implemented it and how many meetings they had, how much time it took, who they consulted with. Um, I think it's really a disservice to um, local officials who are elected, you know, by their by constituents, <laughs> like we are, and um, have the ability to represent what their citizens um, are looking for. So I would strongly support. Um, Senator Torres Ray's um, 8 2 amendment. Senator Hall. Thank you, Mr. Chair <clears throat> and Senator Wickland. Um, what I'm hearing from you is that if a city beats the state to the punch and makes a law that the state would disagree with, that they should be able to continue what they have decided to do. And I would disagree with that. The state is there to protect the individuals in our state. If a city were to decide to stop all abortions in any hospitals, what I'm hearing from you is you would say we should allow them to keep that ordinance in their city because they got it there and we shouldn't be going back on it. So if every city in Minneapolis, in Minnesota 
would do something like that, or a majority of them, then you would want us to continue down that route. I just disagree with that. I think that's what the state is, to look at some of those things. And when we feel this isn't working as a state, we need to then <clears throat> uh, override that. Senator Wickham. Uh, Mr. Chair, Senator Hall, I guess you can extend it to what you think my principle would be to apply to any possible situation. That isn't what my, I'm saying. I'm saying about this bill that came to us just this week and has a retroactive application clause in it, and I don't think that's appropriate. Okay. Uh, members, we, uh, we're going to go to a vote. Uh, Mr. Erickson, would you take the roll call, please? Senator Hall. Mr. Chair. But Senator this Hall. This is on the amendment, correct? It's on the amendment, right. Uh, I vote no. Senator Weger. Yes. Senator Lane. Yes. Senator Jasinski. No. Senator Anderson. No. Senator Torres Ray. Yes. Senator Matthews. No. Senator Osmek. Senator Ralph. No. Senator Wickland. Yes. Senator Osmek. The vote being taken is four yes and five no. The motion is defeated. Senator Hall, final comments? Are members of the committee final comments? Senator Weger? Well, Mr. Chair, I had some comments. Uh, okay. If you wanted committee before the author closed. Go ahead. Uh, Mr. Chair, I oppose the measure. Senator Hall, I agree that we do have a various approaches by communities to address this. That's by design. And I agree that it may add to the cost, but the longer term cost by not having these strategies would be much more in terms of protection to the environment. So I understand the motivation to try to do this. Uh, I find it a little ironic uh, right after Earth Day that we're doing this, as I look at you know, the various packaging and uh, what you have here. But you know we have that opportunity, I guess, to discuss it. I have not heard from a single city council or county or chamber member in my district for this type of uh, preemption move. And I do meet with those persons regularly, so at least in, in my area, nobody has weighed in on the need. Moreover, there's been a great deal of support, starting with our solid waste commissions. And these groups, these citizen grassroots groups, that pretty much formed in the mid 80s in response to the landfill crisis that we had throughout our state. And it got about groundwater and the air, bre air we breathe, the water we drink, just environmental health. And that's why we put in the various solid waste uh, protection uh, proposals and put then to the cities, to the communities, to the counties to develop their plans, and that would be the laboratory of ideas of how they best could reach their goals. So this was by statutory design that we have this flexibility, and so whatever the community might be, we empowered them through local control to decide how best to do it. And I believe it's working. It may be controversial at times, it may be inconvenient, but the fundamental concern is the environment. And to not continue on that progress will cost us much more in the long run. Perhaps there will be an overall state policy at some point on this, but to preempt those communities that are making progress, and I believe are having dialogue with business to the extent they can. Consumers support this, and so respectfully, I, I disagree, and in the name of local control, of the intent, what I think, for the overall solid waste management strategy in our state, which looked at local control, 
I would oppose the bill. Senator Hall, any comment? Um, no, I okay. appreciate you all coming in. Senator Tor Torsway. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chair, and thank you, Senator Hall. One thing, Senator, that I just want to remind you is that uh, this is working uh, for the cities that are moving in this direction, not just here in the state of Minnesota, but throughout the world. And I hear the message from the small businesses, and I am sensitive to that. I was asked to visit some of these uh, businesses uh, and to really look at you know, the percentage of money that goes into buying these containers. So I'm very sensitive to that. But I can guarantee you, uh, Senator, that every single one of them said, we would like to move into making sure that we use renewable you know, containers. Obviously, we don't want to use non-renewable uh, uh, materials. But it's the cost is what is a problem for us. Uh, we care about the planet, and we want to recycle, and we want to uh, compost these materials, but it is expensive. And so the responsible way to say is, that, okay, let's figure out then how do we. So these businesses could have, you know, a tax incentive to move in that direction. I don't know how the city of Minneapolis actually did all of these conversations, but they move into, you know, incentives. So, so I think that the response of saying, okay, you know, it's too expensive, continue to pollute the environment, these, you know, uh, uh, non-renewable materials that are toxic, you continue to use that because it's, you know, it's cheap. Millennials don't want that, Senator. Millennials are actually choosing businesses that use renewable materials and that are, use responsible environmental practices. They really, really do. And so by not acting responsibly to really help business position themselves to compete locally, nationally, worldwide, is a disservice to local businesses. It's a disservice to our economy, by far. And so I propose that instead of saying continue to pollute, continue to do this because it's cheap, we should say, how do we do something that is more innovative? And I think that's where local governments are beginning to show us this is how we do it. This is how we do innovative practice. We have more containers in Minneapolis. We have more containers. We have no excuse not to recycle. So they are spending a lot of money. But in the long run, they are saving money. And businesses are, are appreciating what we're doing. So I, I believe that this is a, a, a very important issue, Senator, and that we should move in a direction of kind of doing responsible policy and incentives so that business can thrive in an, in a, in an environment that is respectful of our planet. So thank you, Mr. Chair, and thank you. Senator Ralph. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Just, just a couple of observations, uh, especially on the, some of the last comments, that businesses do respond, given the opportunity. They will do the right thing in terms of packaging, and they will do it voluntarily, because they have a conscience. And I think as legislators and as a government, we have to respect that conscience. And we have to give them the opportunity to do that. And I concern myself that, again, here we are, saying we're going to substitute ourselves, the legislature. We know better than the person who is actually there operating the business. And I do agree that there is some need for local input and local control. But that control has to be supportive, not prohibitive. And that's where local control can be the, the experiment, the engine. And when it becomes evident that there is a good idea or a good thing that the government can then grasp hold of and say, wow, you've solved the problem. Here's some incentive to go across the state or across the nation. That's when it is the time for government to step in and say, we support, we understand, we recognize, instead of saying, we know better. So I, I just feel that we, we have to come at things like this, and especially when we come at them from the issue of the very smallest of controls, that for the government to inject itself into that conversation has to be done with great, great care. 
And I take nothing away from the municipalities that have attempted to go forward with something like this. And I applaud them for trying to do that. But when the issue arises to something that affects not only that municipality, but the rest of the state, then it becomes time for us to provide a background, an even and level fra framework or playing ground, if you wish, for those municipalities to go ahead and, and, and conduct that experiment. So in a, in a situation like this, we've made a wonderful case here that this is something we should study as a state. So I, that, for that reason, I feel that the first step is to say, okay, let's stop all of this experimentation and go forward with something, something on a statewide basis. I think this bill is, a, is an attempt to do that. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Senator Wicklund. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, yeah, I just wanted to add a, 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 my thoughts on, in um, opposing this bill. Um, I really think that, I mean, two, two key reasons that I would like to, to put forward. One is that I just don't think that, that taking away the opportunity for local governments, um, counties, um, cities, to, to be able to work on this issue is the right way to do it. Um, taking away their, um, their opportunity to be creative at the local level um, I, and not coming forward with any um, comparable um, legislation to, to work on this at the state level, I think that's, that's really, um, that that's not a good idea. <laughs> um, I think that the cities are seeing the effects of uh, envir environmental costs to their, their cities. They've seen health impacts. And I think that they should have the opportunity to discuss ways to address them. Um, and this bill simply says you can't do that. Um, and I, I don't think that we should be in the role of of taking their ability away to, to look at health, environmental, public health issues, um, environmental issues, and finding ways to solve them at the local level um, through legislation like this. We should also be working on it at a state level, and we should be coming forward with, with ideas and, and um, introducing concepts that would address environmental and health issues at, from a state per perspective. But that isn't included in this bill. And um, I think it's very um, short-sighted to, to say we're going to take this away from local governments um, at this time without having that in-depth conversation at the state level about what, what we are going to do to address environmental issues. So in, in, in that way, I can't support this bill today. Senator Lane, and then we're going to vote. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Just a quick comment that when we discuss it at a statewide level, we'll still have the same argument for the businesses that, that are uh, adjacent to another state. This argument will never cease. So that at some point, somebody has to take leadership for the health of, this, of us all. Senator Hall, would you like to move your bill? Uh, yes, I would like to move uh, Senate File 3135, uh, recommended to pass, as amended and referred to the Commerce and Consumer Protection Finance and Policy Committee. Senator Torsway recalls, asked for a roll call. Roll call granted, uh, Mr. Peterson. Oh, before I do that, S Senator Hall renews his motion that Senate File 3135 be recommended to pass as amended, and be referred, re referred to the Commerce and Commerce Consumer Protection Finance and Policy Committees. Mr. Peterson. Senator Hall. Yes. <laughs> Senator Weger. No. Senator Lane. No. Senator Jasinski. Yes. Senator Anderson. Yes. Senator Torres Ray. No. Senator Matthews. Yes. Senator Osmeck. Senator Ralph. Yes. Senator Wickland. No. Senator Osmeck. There being five yes votes and four no votes, the motion passes, and Senate File 3135, as amended, is recommended to pass and be sent to Committee on Commerce and Consumer Protection. Thank you, Senator Hall. Thank you, members.